Yo, man. Yo, man. What's happening? Oh, dude, you know, just, uh, just chilling. Just chilling? Just chilling. What's happening with you? Oh, all kinds of things, man. Like, Word, I feel yeah. like you're always chilling, man. Uh, that's all I do, bro. Anytime I say, hey, man, how you been? What you been doing? You're like, you know. Just chilling. <laughs> just chilling. You know? It's like, what else is there to do except, except just chill? Fuck, dude. That's, uh, that's how we get down, bro. So, I jump street here, on the way over here, I was thinking, because, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I'm always like, I'm always like back and forth in my head about, about doing these, these, these podcasts. And podcasts! And I, I, you know, I'm like, do I do it? Do I not do it? What are my motivations for doing this? Why do I even do this? What the fuck is this thing anyway? And I'm like, well, I kind of want to help the homie out. Yeah, thank you, man. Oh, no, no problem. That's what friends are for, man, to help the homie out. Yeah, you're damn right, bro. But I don't know where the fuck this might go. And okay. That, and that kind of makes me nervous. Good. And so... That's scary. Though I may or, or may have not have been a guest in the past, for the sake of this podcast, if you were a professional podcast host, you would have introduced me as El Fuego Huero. Okay? So what... That's the... What I'm that is the... That is El Fuego Huero... Uh, that is the creator wrestler I made on the AAA Lucha Libre video game, Edoes Del Ring. Ah, oh, no I, shit, man. Yeah, my... Is, is, what, what, is that, we played that one? I don't believe we played that one. We, we played, played, we played that Japanese one on PS2 that's an import, which is uh, called... Uh, oh, God. I think it has the word King of Coliseum. Gotcha, okay. But, uh, no, this one's on Xbox. It's pretty cool. It's a good game, but, you know. So I created this wrestler, um, El Fuego Hueto, and my fucking uh, Spanish is, isn't all that great. I, I think, or at least I hope it means the white flame. No, that's... But it might mean the flaming white boy. I don't know. <laughs> Wait, no, wasn't that on uh, the... Uh, it was on something. I could. I don't know, but it, it popped up. Like, down. Is that they, they call it they the, call white it, flame. the white flame? Okay, there you go. Uh, my, I knew it was in my head for some reason when I was making the character. Yeah. And there's only like so many options as to like uh, you know ring attire and all that. All right. So you made him a flaming white guy. I made him a, a guy flame? with. It, it basically, he looked like I, I, I. He's like hot stuff Eddie Gilbert, but with a mask with flames on it. Was the flames you put on, I, or was it a flame, a preloaded oh, flame? Oh, it was a preloaded flame. Cool thing. <laughs> it's not like the... flames the, were definitely preloaded. Like the uh, the sunglasses you can get or with the, the flames on them. Remember those, too, that they had? Oh, I, I I mean, it doesn't surprise me. I didn't see them for sale at certain shit, truck stops, but yeah. I, I dodged the fuck out of it. If you dodged that shit, shit, that's awesome, man. I, I, not, yeah, no, I never had sunglasses. <laughs> did you have some sunglasses with flames on? I, I did. I bought them because they were awesome, dude. Oh, I was like... Oh, we, and when was this? What year? Dude, like, probably like 2003 or something, maybe. But they were silver with blue flames, but I was able to get a silver marker. And able to like Are they were they like Oakleys where they kind of started in the front yeah. and curled around the side? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And dude, they I, I don't like flames on shit, man, because it looks fucking stupid, man. Like straight oh, up. I hate flames on shit. I hate flames on those Tito Ortiz skull e caps. Yeah, and it's. I hate flames on fucking tattoos on on wrists. I'm gonna I'm gonna piss the eight viewers off because one of these motherfuckers is gonna have flame tattoos from their fucking wrists up, but. I'm not into that shit, man. You're, why, why, my you, boxing coach? Yeah. He has flames on his wrist. I mean, I guess if you know your hands, you're, you're you know you're a boxing coach. It's like fists of fire or whatever. But I don't have the heart to be like, yo, oh. homie, those, those flames are kind of flaming. Yeah, I don't have eyes of fire, dude. I have fucking awesome eyesight, but I don't have the <laughs> eyes of fire, man. I don't want to be fucking blunt that shit. Superman bro. has eyes of fire. This, is that Superman's one of his strengths? Like laser, like eyes. Doesn't he have to like laser eyes? Is it X-ray eye? eyes or is it like great vision? I think I think he can burn things. Or maybe they're confusing him with Cyclops. But doesn't Superman wear glasses? Or Clark Kent doesn't wear glasses? He has heat vision or something, right? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, you're asking the wrong person. <laughs> I should know this because I used to read so many comic books as a kid. But I was never really a Superman guy. I was always more of a Batman guy, a Spider-Man guy. As, as like a... like. Eight year old, you know, 
Right, not as a... Well, because you go to, as I got into, like, my early teens and the image and the Valiant and all that, you know, then you get too cool for, like, the mainstream superheroes, and then you're like... Then you're not even reading comic books about superheroes, and then... When you're, before when you know you're not even buying comic books, you're just reading graphic novels about, you know, wet blankets and, and shit. Wet blankets? <laughs> no, I, there's a graphic novel called Blankets. I think it's, I don't remember, it's been a while. It's called Blankets? Blankets. Is this like... It's just some, some kind of some emo comic book shit, I guess. What's the difference between uh, a graphic novel it. and... You really book? don't know this. No, man, J- uh... Jacob was trying to I bet he was. And, about and it went straight through. Okay, so com- okay, comic books back in the day, one issue at a time every month. Unless there's some indie publisher who's lazy and then it's like once every whatever the fuck they get off their ass. Like, you know, Sam Keith, one of my favorite dudes who made this comic book called The Max, he'd do it like sometimes there'd be like six, seven weeks between an issue just because he was a lazy fuck and this was like, sorry guys. Anyway, a story of, say, an arc of a story, say it takes like six or eight issues to complete the story. You collect all that in like a book form and you sell it and that's a graphic novel. That same story existed in six to eight, I'm just, you know, throwing that number out there. It could be 14 issues, whatever the fuck. Those were sold monthly, but rather than have to buy them and wait every month, you can get the whole fucking story collected in a book for, for like a like a nominally... So larger this, but still cheaper than buying a separate comics type of a fee this is the equivalent of Netflix season of I'm watching Breaking Bad right now oh really? okay yeah so you get it all at once yeah and yeah so it's the same it's same a Netflix sort of thing yeah it's like Netflix okay <laughs> graphic yeah. novels are like Netflix and they weren't so big back in the day day and then like there came a point where graphic novels became like the way most people bought comics or at least people that weren't, like, super nerds, like this Jacob character that I've never met, but I've heard his podcast. Yeah. Um, and, and so now it's, like, people that kind of have an interest in comics but aren't, like, super geeky, but, like, might, like, read Watchmen because the movie came out and it's, like, you know, Alan Moore has got hype and he's, like, New York Times bestseller or whatever. Like, graphic novels became more common and, and, and stuff so that's the difference okay so yeah okay I got man, it. I'm getting way the fuck sidetracked but it's cool dude that, that's stuff that's I need to know that's what the podcast is for the podcast the podcast podcast gets sidetracked and I was just thinking like the other day when I texted you what got me thinking was that I was listening to the intro to your podcast I have an intro or no <laughs> let me get back to that <laughs> but let's let's shelf that right for now um, because public access being public access, you don't need no fucking intro. Dude, speaking of public access, to sidetrack it again. Boop. <laughs> okay, go for it. Well, wait, wait, let me remember okay. what I was going to say. Okay, go. Okay, so the Colt Cabana thing. Oh, you're bringing up Colt Cabana. That fits in with what I was about to bring well, up. Well, good. Let, 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 I'll segue in with that. Segue. <laughs> so the public access, he was, remember I was telling you in that uh, last episode about how he brought up public access when we talked about uh, Quack and Bush. You know, I didn't, Listen to the last episode yet? Okay. But I did yesterday while I was harvesting plants. Listen to the last five episodes that I was saving for that task. So I listened to Quack's interview about him getting a shit on public access, and I have watched Chikara years ago, and I didn't even know that they went completely black for like the last nine or ten months, which is pretty fucking cool. Wait, Not to get sidetracked. What do you mean black? You didn't listen to the podcast? I listened to the podcast. You just don't watch. You're not a nerd like I am about wrestling to the point where you ever were a Jakarta fan. Right. Okay, but you know what Jakarta is, more or less? Well, they went, like, black in the sense that they stopped doing shows for... You listened to the podcast. How did you not get this? I I was... Okay, well, the whole thing in this fucking cool as fuck, and it makes me want to get back into Jakarta, is that after doing, like, 12... uh, Seasons, as they call it in Shakara. Yeah. Um, they had a storyline where basically they uh, got bought out by this fake conglomerate, and um, they stopped running shows for like nine months. And all these fans, who you know through Smart Mark Video or whatever, or or torrent sites like like me, have been watching the shows. They're suddenly up in arms because their favorite wrestling promotion is no longer making shows, but with no explanation as to like why. Oh. Fuck. And this was a deliberate thing that Quack did. So as to, like, make this weird-ass story where he, he'd he do the... It was really interesting. These viral, uh, 
Like, basically, all these fans in Philadelphia, where they run most of their shows, had to, like, chase these little clues on the internet that, like, what did you call it? Mining? Uh, not Bitcoin mining. Geocaching? Yeah, kind of like that kind of shit. Or are you talking about Bitcoin mining? No, no, no. Geocaching. Okay. Uh, where there'd be, like, clues, and, like, this one guy who's a Chicago fan had to go, like, to, find, to some, like, read between the lines, figure it out. He ended up finding, like, a chest in, like, a storage unit. That, that that had, like, a clue. And all these things had to happen, and until they happened, the fans actually gave a fuck enough to do this, Jakar would not be brought back. And oh. theoretically, had these certain, say, 30 diehard Jakar fans not, you know, gone to these weird websites and done these geode caching similar type things to find all these various clues... Um, and they went to great fucking links. Quack did like he had this this fake corporation go knock on the doors of various fans that had come to the shows in Philadelphia, <laughs> acting like they're representatives of this big corporation. That's totally false. But you know, in a work situation where they're like trying to be like, pro wrestling is real. This is a real corporation that bought your favorite indie, and now we're knocking on your door to. You know, it, they, they, they went to great lengths to make it... It, it was some Manny Kaufman shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Blurring the lines and all that. So now, apparently, Jakara is going to be back and have its first show next month. So it's a good... As, as Quack said in the interview, which you say you heard, but obviously didn't comprehend because you didn't... We don't watch Jakara or weren't listening. Yeah. I'm just dissing the fuck out of you. No, I fucking... Uh, I don't, I don't it's know. a good jumping off point, and if, if you don't know the past, when they start again, it's like... You know, bring in new fans, uh, but apparently they alienate a lot of their old fans because they were like, you know, nerdy, smarky assholes who were like, fuck your car, you, you stopped running for a year, you asshole, that was my favorite and indie promotion, yada, yada, yada. That's where I was going to get to, like... Anyway, not to sidetrack you. No, yeah, that, well, that, that segues into exactly what public, I was Public saying, access. That it, Black um, put shit on public access. Yeah, that he got the people, like, rather than go for this huge broad spectrum of people where it's just like trying to pander to everybody. He got the fucking people who... Oh, yeah, he distilled his audience yeah. down to the types of people he wanted to pay attention to. Yeah, and that's fucking awesome. I, that's, I, I, that's I thought that, that concept really rang, rang with, true with me. You know? Yeah, I me thought too. that was pretty and, cool. And that's hard thing to do, to though. To. Yeah. Really hard thing to do. And even Chikara, the funny thing is, it's like, I, I think I spent like, mm, maybe like less than a year, almost a year following every Chikara show because I torrented off of the wrestling side. I torrent everything off of, and uh, this one character, this guy who's uploader named Lunchbox, who put up all the Chikara shit, because Quack sinks all his money in Chikara, and you know, if you heard the interview, he doesn't give a fuck, but he's like, broke right. all the time, you know, because you know how it is, any wrestling, yeah. it's hard yeah, to make yeah, a buck, you're not going to make, a, not gonna make any fucking money, yeah. and, um, and this guy Lunchbox had been uploading all the fucking shows that he'd get from Smart Mark Video, mail order DVD or whatever, and people like me would download them. And Jakara has a podcast called Pop. I want now you got me wanting to say a podcast every time. Called Podcast A Go Go, which for people who didn't have the videos, it would be every like week or two on YouTube. This is from like five years ago or six years ago. It would have like uh, a brief like summary of the show encapsulated in like five or ten minutes, where you'd get the highlights if you didn't watch the two or three hour show. So if you can't watch every show, you at least keep up. And then catch some of the shows if you had the money because the shows cost, you know, 20 bucks a DVD or whatever. Um, and in this podcast, at the end, he he calls out this Lunchbox guy. Oh, shit. Like, and was like, yo, bro, like, please stop uploading my shit. I'm dying here. And, uh, and, and the dude, I guess, felt guilty and for a while stopped uploading him and then somebody else picked up the slack, but... Someone else, meaning he changed his username. Probably, yeah, his probably. Username. But, but I mean, he did it in such a way, like, he was nice about it, but he was like, shame on you, buddy. Yeah, you're, you're fucking me over here, bro. You're fucking me over here, bro. I'm trying to fucking keep my shit going. But back to the art of wrestling. Yeah. Not to get sidetracked. No, this is... I was just thinking on the other... Oh, I was watching the podcast intro. Uh, while I was driving, before I called you to be like, yo, I'm kind While of, you were driving? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm you know, I have an iPhone, bro, I'm a multitasker. Yeah. Okay. Um, I was like, I was like, I was, I don't know, just, I just felt like checking it out, man. I didn't know who was on last week, whatever. I'm one of the eight fans. Yeah, eight. Eight. It chumped up? I think it's an eight or nine. <laughs> and, uh, 
something like that. I'm down. Um, I think I think uh, you know th- that guy down at the Westland Bar. You know. The guy in the Westland Bar. I don't know. You're telling me you had a fan at the bar in Westland that was like listening to your. Oh podcast. yeah, yeah. I yeah. Maybe yeah. he's number six. <laughs> <laughs> he got into the ground floor. I think he was number two or three. Yeah, I think it might have been. It was a man. while back. Yeah. But anyway, I digress. I was listening to your podcast, and it was the intro where you're like, yo, man. And you, you said it like four or five times. And and it occurred to me at that very moment, and I'm sure you've already had this real revelation, that you, I was about to text you and be like, yo, man, is the new hey, guys. It is. Have I, you had this revelation? Dude, yeah, I'm, I'm throwing your man in there. Dude. That's what I'm saying. It, it's, 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 it's my it, thing. It sticks, dude. It does. And it's simple. It's, it's like for podcast. It sticks. And yeah, and it's like the, it's simple. It's like the, uh, the yes or whatever, the no. You can't fucking. compare it to yes. There ain't no but, yes. Okay, it's not that simple. It's that shit gets it. said, it shows they aren't even wrestling now. They're starting to yes at like other sporting events. And like, you you wait till people start. You get yes chance at man. TNA shows and shit like that. No shit. Oh yeah, huge ones, huge ones, all the time. Yes. Yes, you, you can't. They they can't can't heat it out or anything. They, they can't fucking fade it out. I mean, I'm sure they try, but they, yeah, yes chance at TNA shows That's for for like the up, last man. like six to nine months and that they can't kill off for any reason and then they just no sell it. The commentators, dude. And it's like, yeah, that's not happening. And it's like, happen. how do they not push that guy? How do they not push him to the moon? Like, yeah. like, come on, it's bleeding over into other other sporting events and other promotions. Like, it's it's unstoppable. But I digress. I don't want to go on a wrestling tangent. Right. But um, but yeah, El Fuego Weto, uh is my nom de plume today. All right. Kind of like a, uh, it's like the Blue Blazer is to Owen Hart. Well, yeah, yo man, uh, El Fuego. What? El Fuego. El Fuego. Wedo. Wedo? Wedo. El Fuego Wedo. You've heard the word Wedo before, right? Is that flame? No, that's white boy. No, that's white. Or a light-skinned Mexican. See, I grew up in San Antonio, I it was Texas. Blanco and, is white. Well, see, so I, grew up, like, I grew up in San Antonio, and, and my stepdad's Mexican, my sister's Mexican, a lot of my family's Mexican, and like they always call me Wedo. And, like, oh, okay. In conversation, like aunts, uncles, whatever, because like, I was like the only white dude in the family kind of thing, you know what I'm saying? So from a very early age, I knew the definition of Weddle. But but I've heard yeah. Weddle used from, uh, like, a light-skinned Mexican. Ah, like so... Talking, like, kind of like how black dudes, when they're talking about the kind of black chicks they want to bang, there's, like, a red bone, a yellow bone. I've never heard that before. Oh, it's a Texas thing, man. No, no, I'm... I'm okay, we'll get this Texas thing. It has to do with the shade of your skin. And so, like, as a yellow, like a yellow skinned black woman, like a light skin would be like a yellow bone, a red bone would be like. Anyway, I digress. But Weto, I've heard used for like a light skin, more of a Spaniard of a, of a Mexican, being called that by a darker Mexican. But it also means white boy. Okay, so it's like. So I'm 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 learning, you know, I'm schooling you on. Yeah, dude, I, that's that's shit. I've never even heard that's fucking. Weto. That's uh, letting me into that. Texas slash Mexican culture that I have. Oh, yeah. Uh, little. One of these days, I'll cook you some that. migas, man. Put you up on game. What's that? Migas? Yeah. You ever, know, you ever play the migas? Or ch- chilequiles? No. Oh, it's the best brex- breakfast ever, man. That's, oh. a, that's the only thing I miss about Texas. Is it Tex Mex? Tex Mex breakfast. Tex Mex breakfast? Ooh. It's, it's basically eggs scrambled with fried corn chips and like pico de gallo, all in, in cheese if you want it. It's really the cheese mix of chilequiles. And really, migas, M-I-G-A-S, and chilequiles is kind of the same thing. It's just some places call it one thing, some places call it... You can't it's, get that shit up here. Wait, it's, you said chilies? Chilequiles. Chilequiles? Correct. Chilequiles is what? Uh, migas. Migas. It's the same thing. It's just like you throw cheese on it. Some, some places okay, will call it chilequiles, but okay. it's really just migas with cheese, but... Yeah, dude, you're, kind of you're the egg master, man. I'm the egg master. This guy cooks some fucking mean I eggs. I cook mean eggs. The, the fucking I, I fried have some eggs, eggs this morning. Or whatever. Oh, man, yeah. I, fry, I can fry eggs you, like you nobody's business. You got that business. shit down, dude. I have, sick, I have half a dozen every morning, like clockwork, dude, with, with salsa. But yeah, no. I, Frying I, the corn chips is difficult, though. Making migas is like... It's, it's not as easy you as You fry the corn chips yourself. You don't go to fucking the well, I don't make store. migas because it's tough. 
But growing up, I, my, my tias, they made some mean migas, man. Mean migas. Your tias made, made, my made, tias made me some mean me, migas. That's a tongue twister. You saw, I was about to say, you said that five times fast. I can't, man. I fucking had three cups of coffee. I my can't tias made mean fast. migas. <laughs> but yeah, man, you go to the south side of San Antonio, you get some good ass migas, man. Some real fucking migas. None of this fucking hole in the wall, Jim's fucking chain migas. You don't even know what Jim's is, though, because you don't know what right. is Jim's? Uh, Jim's is kind of like a Denny's, but it, like a regional Texas Denny's. Is it a regional it's, it's not bad, Mex? But it's not. Or is it like a Denny's? It's like a Denny's, but with like some Tex Mexy twist to it. It's way the fuck better than Denny's, though. Well, that's not fucking difficult, man. No, like, no, it's Denny's not. Denny's is not a uh, quality. But if you're ever Sorry, in Texas Denny's. and you're just like after like late night tip, yeah, passing through, just remember I told you. Gyms. Gyms will, gyms will do the trick. Gyms will take care of you. They got All coffee. Right. They're open 24-7. Well, ne- next time... Gyms and Taco Cabana. Taco Cabana? Yes, dude. Taco is motherfucking Cabana. Is that open Cabana. all the time as well? That is also, for the most part, open 24 hours, yes. Wow. And, all right, and okay. It's not like the best Tex-Mex, but like, comparing Taco Cabana to like Taco Bell, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a one to like a, like a seven in terms of like... From Taco Bell? Is this, well, I do, I'll only eat, like, one thing off the Taco Bell menu, and that's how I've always been my whole life. I don't life. fuck with Taco Bell, man. Yeah, dude, it's messed up, man. Like, There's some racist motherfuckers. I came up here in 2001, right, and I went to Taco Bell, because, like, being a vegetarian, in, in a grind, in, like, a bind, when you, nothing's open, and you're on the road, and, like, you need some food, like, they have beans, you know, they may be, like, rehydrated beans, but whatever. Right. I looked on the menu and I saw these things called Mexi Nuggets. Oh, the Mexi Oh, I fucking. We don't have them. those in Texas, dude. I they miss don't that exist. Shit. They don't have them here anymore. They have, I'm sure they have them at Taco Time. They're oh, close, really? but they're not as good as the Mexi. They're nuggets. fucking tater tots, man. Yeah, dude. But they had that seasoning, and you could go and you buy the nacho cheese dip, and you dip the nacho cheese dip in, the, or you dip that shit in the nacho cheese dip. With a little bit of the hot sauce, so you go and you take the packet and you open up the packet, you put the hot sauce uh, and nacho cheese, and you dip the Mexican nuggets in, and you're like, yeah, hot shit, man. That's how you do Mexican nuggets. That's how I do Mexican nuggets, dude. I used to fuck with that shit all the time, dude. That shit blew my mind, because, like, because, because, I mean... It's not racist. Well, if you think about it, there's a reason why in, in, in like, Texas, or okay. San Antonio, especially, a place where, like, there's more Mexicans than white people. Right. You go to a Taco yeah. Bell and there's nothing on the menu called Mexi Nuggets. Now, now in the same fucking year, I come to Portland, Oregon, and I see Mexi Nuggets on the menu. Now think about that. That's obviously a, a what purposeful decision. Do they I mean? have the Mexi Nugget equivalent down there? No, I don't know fucking tater tots at Taco Bell. Oh, dude, you fucking. And you put anything Mexi hyphen? Yeah. You're gonna have fucking. You're gonna have some serious fucking heat. I, I saw. I saw basketball, dude. I did not see basketball. Oh, okay. Well, there's a part, man, in basketball where they play the San Antonio team. I do know what it is, though. Okay, they play the San Antonio. Oh, oh dodgeball? No. No, basketball is made by the guys, uh, the South Park guys. Yeah, I, 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 and, anyway, uh, continue. So they have they a play part, San Antonio? Yeah, they play San Antonio, and uh, when the San Antonio team's getting all amped up for it, it says uh, they go and they have like a team huddle, and they say... What do we always say? One, two, three. And I say, fuck the Mexicans. And, and it just like goes, and they have that weird look, just like, what the fuck? Uh, you know, one of those what the fuck things. That's what I was thinking when I think of San Antonio, man. A lot of people think Pee Wee Herman in the Alamo, but. Not me, man. <laughs> <laughs> Not me, man. Which had me sidetracked. I was just always talking about San Antonio. I was like thinking, oh yeah, the Blazers played the Spurs on the 17th, and I don't even know how that, how that panned out. Do you know? Um, They. I was going to go to the game, but tickets were crazy expensive. What happened? I think they ended up losing. They Because really? Patty Mills was on the team. I, well, I watched part of Patty Mills used to play for the Blazers a few years back. and He had the inside track? Um, well, he was on the Spurs? He plays on the Spurs now. Yeah, so he, he like knew the playbook or something? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Fucking Patty Mills. Patty Mills, dude, he was some, I think he was Australian or some shit. He's like this little, Sounds pretty little Australian. guy, man. And, uh, I don't know. I think they lost. He's that little? Yeah. He, he's, he's, like, he's, on, he's in the NBA. He's like three feet tall. <laughs> yeah, he's a three foot wonder, bro. He's that little. He's like the Muggsy Bogues of, of 
Australia. He's, he's like the Muggsy Bogues of Australia, dude. He's fucking awesome, dude. I loved watching him play. Muggsy Bogues was in Curb. When? Uh, I don't know, but when I was watching Curb, like, last month or whatever, from beginning to end again, yeah. there was some episode, I think in the last season or two, where Muggsy Bogues made a brief... Oh! Cool. It was an awkward bathroom scene with Richard Lewis and, and Larry David. And they're, like, at the fucking, the fucking stand-up fucking pissers and shit. Yeah. I don't know what the word for those are. The things that splash back the into your... The, the urinals, thank Dude, you. I, I was just thinking And they're that. checking out Muggsy's penis. Oh, yeah. Because Richard Lewis was dating a black woman, and he had a hang-up about his, whether his dick was adequate compared to what she had had in the past. And, oh, and, he, and she, he, I guess he'd asked Larry to... I don't remember the specifics. The point is, is that they're in a bathroom with Muggsy Bogues, and then they check out his dick, and then Muggsy Bogues gets, like, all aggravated and causes a fucking, you know, a little scene or whatever, but... Uh, not know, to get sidetracked. No, not to get sidetracked. I watched the end of that movie. Uh, I have a free HBO right now. Um, oh, it was uh, on. It's a good movie. Yeah, uh, oh, with the the Howard. Yeah, yeah, the Howard. I forgot the name of the movie. Yeah, but it's a great movie. Yeah, it was pretty pretty cool, man. I, pretty, pretty good. Uh, pretty pretty good. <laughs> kind of felt like a, kind of felt like a really long good. curve. Yeah, but uh, that's cool with me, man, because I miss curve. I do too, man. Uh, it's been a few years now. Start do what I did. Start at the beginning. Watch it all over again. It's, I, it's I like have I have the thing right there, man. Oh, you have go. You have go. You I just have told I, me. HBO. Have you been listening to some electro swing? Uh, yeah, dude. Fucking weirdo, dude. Dude, yeah, it's kind of my jam, dude. I don't now I, I didn't know what it was, dude. I was. I don't even know what the fuck that is. Yeah. It's fucking. I, I don't want to play it because I'm gonna have to go and uh, electro swing mode. You can start dancing all funny like Toe Jam and Earl. Yeah, and I'm gonna have to go and like put it up there and describe what it is on the on the YouTube. That's another thing. I looked up on YouTube uh, or on the the Google. The Google? I'm, I'm, I'm quoting... The Google? The Google. Um, that you can um, take YouTube. Oh, yeah, I have the device. Are you talking about the, the Chromecast? What's the Chromecast? I'm just talking about... Okay, continue. I'll like tell you. putting it onto iTunes. Like you can take the R, make the RSS feed from YouTube. Oh, to take the songs. Yeah, like I can put my yeah, podcast yeah, yeah, yeah. on, on yeah, yeah, yeah. iTunes. My my gym my my coach fucking does that shit. He like that's how he gets his music. And I'm like I'm like why don't you just go torrent the album? But he's like torrent ignorant. Like a lot of people are. That's how I am. I don't understand. I've been torrenting since like 2003. It's easy. Oh, uh, dude, I I was. Like, it's easier than the bullshit of going to YouTube and peeling a song off of there. Like to me. YouTube downloader. Yeah. That type of shit. But that's how he gets his music. You know, he, he, I'm like, whatever, you old crazy fuck who's afraid of learning how to torrent, which is easy. <laughs> I just dissed you again. No, I don't know how to torrent, man. I have no clue, man. People are afraid to learn how to torrent because they think it's this big, complicated deal and it's like so easy. Like, I could have you torrenting with a, if you had a computer in front of you in, in I don't have a computer, bro. under five minutes, dude. Under five minutes, easy. If, if I had a computer, I would. I but, tore it like a motherfucker. I, I used to be fucking... Uh, the LimeWire King. LimeWire and that. fucking Napster and... Uh, All that shit. Yeah, and... Oh, no, this shit's way doper than that. Like, when that shit went the way of the Buffalo, this fucking... This 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 uh, torrenting thing kicked in. Well, I, I need to fucking get a computer. Oh, man. bro, yeah. I mean, if it wasn't for fucking BitTorrents, dude... I wouldn't have fucking 30 terabytes of fucking old school wrestling footage at my house. I, I have a shitload. It's called YouTube. I got more than YouTube, bro. That's true. I that's, do. And I'm not, yeah. I'm not just playing. Dude, well... The, like, I have those my books. I got a shelf of my books. Just all is filled with this pro... I have more wrestling than I could watch for the rest of my life. Like, easily. If all I did was sit and watch wrestling all fucking day long. So what are you gonna do with it? I have like every Raw and every WWE pay per view and every SmackDown up until like from like eighty five to like whenever I stopped watching WWE like a year and a half ago or whatever and, and stopped giving a fuck. But what am I gonna do? I don't know. I feel like a retard for I spent so much time and energy just compiling all this shit like a collector nerd. Cause now I'm like kind of over it. You can't like. Don't get me wrong. I have way much cooler shit than that. Like I've got like. Like Continental when Eddie Gilbert was booking for like 12 months in 1988 and it's you know like weird shit like that you know like but every Memphis TV from 78 to 83 or you know like shit you know oh, I'm like, fuck. oh I've got some shit bro like like the, like, like oh you can't even imagine 
Like it's, it's, it's even it's gotten to such a degree where to wade through it and organize it in a database yeah. would be a fucking task, dude. A fucking task. Some of it's just burned on DVDs. Before I got smart enough to use like external hard drives to archive it, I just would burn it on DVDs because they're compressed files and shit. Right. Like mostly XVID and MP4 now. But I've got like spools on spools on spools on spools like because I would just archive all this shit because I thought it was like important to have or whatever. Dude, it can be important to have for like maybe not all of it, but I guess I'm sure like 20 years from now I'll get on a wrestling kick again. Yeah. I mean, I always love wrestling. I'm, I'm not saying I stop. I still watch TNA though. I don't know why. But like, why do I always talk about wrestling? Like, because we both know wrestling. And I, yeah, and, and that's how I know you. I know yeah. you from, from just, just fucking ring crew and it and shit. It's funny how life pans out. But, um, uh, anyway, fucking yeah. right. I don't want to get sidetracked with wrestling because goddamn, I could spend a fucking. Well, it's at least something we know so- stuff about. I know, but the eight viewers at home, I feel like we're alienating ninety nine percent of them probably. How do you? What's ninety nine percent of eight, eight, man? I know. I was gonna crunch the number. What's one percent? I was too eight. lazy to crunch the numbers, so I was like, ninety nine sounds like a good number because it's about realistic. I don't know. You have that one episode that has like forty four fucking views or something like the that fir- was the, the first, first one because that, that was probably because everyone was giving me a chance yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then like, you got oh, one chance to be like wait, man wait. i don't know yeah yeah i mean we, I, i'm really confused about the, the format of your podcast because i feel like we should have a state of the podcast address because like you know you do stand-up comedy you do other things i mean you know you're you're a, a comedian, whatever the fuck that means, yet your podcast has people on it that aren't even anything. Like, I'm not a comedian, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm just a dude, you know what I mean? Like, a guy who in, has a fascination with podcasts. The dudes are my people, Which man. is why I'm here, because, like, I, I listen to so many goddamn podcasts, and I'm, like, intrigued by that world, but, um... But who gives a fuck about what I have to say? Who gives a fuck about what I have to say, dude? I'm some fucking honky bitch. I guess dude. my point is, 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 is like when I'm, when I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go support the homie, and, and like, cause you know, you'll call me and be like, hey, I need a podcast for Friday. It's down on the wire. Can you help me out or whatever? And you did, man. And I want to help you out, but even though I'm like, like, I, I, you can't force a podcast. And sometimes I feel like I get so like. uh I don't want to say anxious, but just so, like, weirdly pressured into feeling like I have to be entertaining, rather than just, like, like, like we're doing now, just talking like we normally do. Yeah, the shit kicking back and forth. The shit kicking, just chilling, so to speak, if you will. But, I mean, I'm, I'm, like, confused, because I think because you're a comedian, I have, I feel like I should be funny, but I'm not a funny guy, at least not on purpose. Right, that's that's. Okay. It's like, is this a life podcast? Is this a personal journal, or is this a comedy podcast? Like, what the fuck is it? Or is it just an anything goes battle royal podcast? Like, where like the dude who you just did a shift on the security for fucking eight hours in front of a Walmart, and he's driving you home. Is just is it, you know, like, what's the format here, dude? Is it? Is it I need. Mean, we we need to figure this shit out. Is what I'm saying. I, and you need to figure this shit out. I it's your I, podcast. Yeah. Well, it, but I just need to know the, what, where you're coming from so I, I know how to, like, act on your podcast. Because, I mean, you know what I mean? It could get really real, but I don't want to be a downer. But I, I don't want it to be, like, everyone has to try to be, like, super funny. Because sometimes I talk about real shit, but sometimes real shit gets funny. That's true. And, you know, I don't want it to be so, like, zoomed in on one thing, whereas, or it's, uh... You know, just just talking. Whereas we're not trying to be funny. We're just we're just talking. And You're letting some funny people, happen. yeah, some people are just like, this is so fucking boring. Uh, why am I listening to this? But it's like, dude, that's what's really going on, man. And I want to be able to express that in some sort of way, and this is the way to express it. If that. No, that makes sense. But then, and, and it has to be a moment where you're not just filling space just because you feel like you should be filling twenty minutes of a podcast. That's why I like. But that's it. the worst. Where you're like, oh god, like, what am I going to talk about now? It has to sound interesting to the eight people at home. 
Right, that's why I like having it where I release one a week and I don't talk about anything that's like super current. So I can just like, when I feel like I want to do a podcast, just hit record and... Nothing super current. Nothing super... No spoilers on your podcast. Dude, no, yeah. Has there been like any spoilers? So, like, so I, I the last know. time we hung out and the last time I saw you, I, I don't remember exactly, but it was like about two weeks ago where we played some Toe Jam and Earl and that snowstorm hit, not to get super current or anything. That's still the last podcast I've done. And I believe I was in a place where like I was like, you would quit smoking weed. And cigarettes. And cigarettes. Yeah. After after a revelation on substances. Correct. Have you kept up with that? Yeah, no, it's been still since Super Bowl and today's... <laughs> since the Super Bowl. Yeah, since the Super Bowl. It's a good Bowl. mile marker. Yeah, so that was, what? That was, just, that was the 15 second? days, 16 days ago, some shit like that. Today's the, what, 20th? So yeah. it was like 18 days ago? Something like that. I mean, I mean me, I was like transitioning... I think I was about to take some... I was trying to get through three days of, of not taking methadone so I could transition to Suboxone. So what, what happened... Uh, and was that was that what it was current when we yeah, guys talked? Yeah, you were just like at that first... First day first of day. not taking my dose. Right. And I was like, I have to go three days before I take the Suboxone or else I'm going to go into precipitated withdrawals immediately and feel like total full-blown dope sick shitty. Right. I was afraid of that. So I got through the three days. Yeah. I filled the script, the Suboxone script, I guess I might have already done that the day before I saw you. I don't know. I think you had had it. You yeah, had, you I think had, I did because it, cause so I did it the day before it. the snow because then I was been like, fuck, I, the pharmacy would have closed. I, don't know. I never took the Suboxone. I just was like, I got, I was like, fuck it, I've been three days, I'm going to go another day and I'm just going to take it one day at a time and I'm just going to be like, see what happens, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I never took the Suboxone and, it, and it's been like, I don't know, two weeks last Tuesday, so whatever the fuck the day is, Holy 15 shit. or 16 days without without taking any opiate medication, it's been a fucking crazy couple of weeks, dude, I mean, Holy which is part of why man. I was kind of like uneasy about doing this podcast. No, I got you. Because That's... I'm in a weird, like, I'm in a weird headspace, yeah. you know what I mean, like emotionally, like I'm kind of fragile. And dude, that's how I, I've been the last I'm few I'm a bit days. too open in general, uh, you know, being a horrible poker player and all, and a politician, uh horrible politician I don't no. kiss babies dude I me, just, me too man I, I fucking like, no it's not my thing man it's like I gotta it's like it's like that was my problem with, with, with DOA was like I didn't want to seem like the aloof guy I, you know he gave me that look like oh don't don't talk about DOA dude I, I still float in there you know like like leave that off the table dude no I but I, but in terms of the socialization in pro wrestling where you have to like run up and be like hello sir but you know what I mean like right I mean, I have utmost respect for everybody, but, like, I tend to be, like, withdrawn and introverted because, like, it's one extreme or the next to me. It's, like, either I open my mouth and I say way more than I should, yep. or I should just shut the fuck up. That's how I am, too. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's tough to, like... It's a tough balancing act. So, like, it's not that I have fucking problems just with anybody. Open. It's just, yeah, I don't... It's It's tough, like, going up and, like, as a... Is that I, As a jabroni? I, I don't want to do shit, man. Like, don't make me do shit. Don't make me have to go up and fucking say, talk to every single person around. Like, right, right, it's right. It's like, I might get stuck, not stuck, but like, I might like, be like, I start talking to someone, and I want to talk to someone for fucking three hours, and like, I can't get to everybody else, and I, I feel bad. It's like, these people... There's, there's, uh, and there's certain individuals that I that I reached a rapport with that I could totally shoot the shit with comfortably forever. Right. Over the two years that I was doing that, but yeah. Then there's some motherfuckers that it's just like. And that's that's Hello, life though, man. Thank you for like, your help. Thank you, sir. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. what it is. And and it's like it's weird. Pro wrestling just weird. Yeah, it, it can it can a, feel weird doing feel, that. It's man. very weird, and I, I'm like, and I'm just I'm so socially awkward around people that I'm not comfortable with. Like I'm comfortable with you. Yeah. That like I just can't handle the anxiety of it all, and it, it's it's fucking crazy. And then there's then there's the like nobody likes a, a smarky motherfucker who doesn't take bumps. Even a yeah. smarky motherfucker who doesn't take bumps like me doesn't like a smarky motherfucker who doesn't take bumps. So I understand. The, the politics involved, the, 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 the hard work that wrestlers do, you know what I mean? So uh, it's, it's, it's very awkward, and uh, it's a strange balancing act, and I just like... Anyway, 
I'm, I digress. Back to what I was saying. Okay. Uh, so anyway, it's been like fucking two and a half weeks or whatever, and it, it's been kind of crazy. I went through all the physical bullshit. I fucking spent like, I spent like two, I've been playing Madden constantly. The first week, just to take my mind off of like the uncomfortable in my own skin kind of feeling. Yeah. Fucking... I'm not a football fan. I don't even watch football. I never have, but in the last like two weeks, I feel like I, I've learned more and understand more about the game of football <laughs> than I ever did before. There's this ver- there's this like subcategory in Madden called Ultimate Team, where there's these like cards that you buy with coins that you win from playing computer teams, or you can buy with real world money and you open them and there's like rare cards and like con- oh, con- yeah, kind of like yeah. magic cards, commons, and uncur- you know, kind of like uncommons that kind of thing like legendary players and their stats and you like make your lineup and you fill the positions and then all that shit and then you can play your you know other real players with your team and shit yeah i had that on nhl 2003 exactly it's an ea thing so you know exactly what i'm talking about yeah so addicting man so yeah. i've just been putting like so much time to that i'm just you know me i'm an obsessive motherfucker no matter what i'm doing me I'm too man fucking obsessed with that shit right now like i just picked up Fucking a defensive tackle, fucking Halitoid Nagata, or I think Nada, this big ass Samoan motherfucker. I'm so stoked, dude. I got Aaron Foster as my running back. And I'm just fucking smashing my homies, dude. Just smashing this D line. Fucking loving every minute of it. Yeah, that, yeah you gotta fucking be. And you check the auctions and shit obsessively because you try to get the like, the low ball coin. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, so, yeah, you gotta get. And when you see a good deal on a player, you gotta swing on it fast or else it'll be gone quick. Yeah. And, and if you hesitate sometimes and you go back and then it's like this bid's already o- auction's already over and you're like fuck yeah, am I, I ever going to see a Joe Montana for 4,000 coins ever again with a 99 OVR probably not oh man I, I'm you, sorry I don't Joe know. Montana oh but yeah they got legendary players too yeah yeah fucking legendary right there man and I'm, I'm obsessed dude obsessed and all this fucking I'm kind of into football at the moment which is really strange for me being a guy who like you know Never played football in his life. Walked the mile in PE, et cetera, et cetera. You walked the Was mile? Was the smoking weed cutting class, walking the mile kind of a dude. You know oh, okay, I, mean? I got you, man. And I always, like, resented football because growing up in, in Texas, it's like high school football is, like, everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just us versus them. Like, I'm the long-haired stoner. Fuck those guys and, you know, all that kind of shit. Like, uh... No, it's... But now, you ever seen the show Friday Night Lights? No. You have Netflix. I uh, have Netflix. If you're bored and you want to see a show, it's not funny at all, but it's like, in my opinion, one of the best written, best fucking, like, as far as character-driven shows I've ever seen. Well, I wouldn't say best I've ever seen, but it's in my top six. No shit. Yeah, top six. Wow. That's a, that's a <laughs> I don't high... do top fives, I do top sixes. Yeah, that's, that's a little better, man. Top five. It's too much pressure. Yeah. There's, there's too, much, too many good shows. Like, it's up there with The Wire and... and I've never seen maybe, The Wire. Maybe Deadwood. I've never and, seen uh, Deadwood. Uh, Breaking Bad, you know. I've seen a little bit of Breaking Bad now. Anyway, the show's about... Oh, Breaking Bad's great. You should watch that start to finish and uh, don't even watch shit else. I'm, I started it a few it. days ago and I'm on, like, the third episode of the second season now. Sweet. Yeah, I've been fucking going through it. It's, just, it's good, man. I'm Leading like, up okay. to the last episode, um, yeah. I, I did the same thing. I rewatched it from start to finish in, like, a period of several days and... Uh, fucking that show is amazing. It gets better and better and better. You're in the Tuco phase right now, huh? Tuco just got killed. Tuco just oh, oh he just got killed. Yeah, he just got killed and Tuco's uh, a bad man. and now they are what just happened? He just The uh, low riders jump in on, Yeah, the okay. the, the D A guy yeah, just yeah. killed him. Hank 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 just killed him and then they just uh, and Hank's a hero and they just kinda like wander off and the bullshit. No, don't, I don't, don't want to give away. Anymore. I don't want to give away. Okay, let's anymore. Anyway, back to Friday Night Lights. Yeah. It's a great show. It's all on Netflix. It's about um, kids in high school in Texas, play and, and and they're playing football. I mean, it's about their lives, not just them on the field, but like at the end of every episode, there's like a that week's game encapsulated into like certain plays in like a less than five minutes kind of a dramatic fashion. Yeah. That drives the story forward, and it sounds like some shit that I would hate. And my girlfriend who watches. Weird shit like that got me into it, and it's fucking great. And uh, that kind of gave me an appreciation for football. And I kind of feel like I missed out in high school. Not like I feel like if I had a coach, I would have I would have been a completely different person, and I would have achieved things. You would have played football. I think you know. I kind of wish I had now. Yeah. And I'm playing all this fucking Madden, and now that I know like what the difference is between a 
you know, middle linebacker and a fucking defensive tackle, I'm, I'm, I'm like thinking what position would I play if I played football in high school? Or if I were to go, say, play fucking old man football on the weekend right now. And, and like, uh, yeah, these are things I've been contemplating. And not, not that I'm going to go play football anytime soon, but I'm just curious what position. I'd like to think I would have been a really great halfback. What's a halfback? Um, it's the guy the quarterback hands the ball to make running plays to, to get yards rather than throw the ball. Or, I might have been a decent wide receiver, but I might be too small. But I, I might, I, Part of me thinks I'm not fast enough to be a halfback, but I, I have the agility. Now I, do, now I do, but when I was a kid and I was like not very athletic or didn't exercise and just fucked off and got drunk and did stupid fucking stupid kid shit. Fucking, uh, probably wouldn't have been, uh, but you know, the right coach could have gotten me. You got me in shape? I need a coach, man. I need a coach, dude. I never had a coach until like two, three years ago when I started boxing. Never had a coach in my life. And now you got... Everybody needs a coach, man. And there's a coach in Friday Lights who's like the greatest dude ever. And it like makes the show, dude. Coach Taylor. Coach Taylor. Coach Taylor. Everyone needs a Coach Taylor. That's... But anyway, what position would you have played? Uh, besides left out. Like, like, th- like thinking about your body, the size you are, your physical, God-given abilities. Uh, knowing what, knowing what, I mean, I know you're not a big football guy, but what position do you think you would have tried out for? Um, or if we were to go play old kicker. man football. Kicker. <laughs> that's, that's perfect, bro. I'm a, I'm a soccer player. You're dude. such a kicker. You're the guy who just comes out and gets the three, dude. <laughs> that's a glorious spot to be in. Dude, yeah. But then I can, I don't know. I was always pretty good Every at team like needs a good kicker. running, and like, but I could throw too. But I don't want to be. I wouldn't want to be a quarterback because I think that's fucking weird. See, I don't think I. I throw like a fucking pussy though, because I like. I look. Yeah. Yeah, I, I look like a fucking re, re, re <laughs> when I fucking. I wanted to say I, I might make a good QB because I'm light on my toes and you know maybe I can run backwards and shit pretty well. I need glasses, though. I'd have to wear corrective lenses. Maybe no, do you get those fucking Buck Williams <laughs> coggles, dude, and you throw that shit off. Get the man. fucking uh, Bill and Beers. Oh. Yeah, the Bill and Beers. Well, oh, that was a face mask for, for... That was one of really glasses. He had a sweet face mask. <laughs> I know, that was a sweet face mask. There was a video game called yeah. Bill and Beers Combat Basketball for the uh, SNES. Oh, I think I remember that. Shitty game. It was like an overhead view. Yeah. That's all right, dude. It was all futuristic with, like, rockets and shit. No shit. Yeah, I rented it. It was, it was, you know, I loved Bill and Beer when I was a kid. I, I did too, man, because I, he was just like. He, he was a hard ass white boy. Yeah. With a cool mask. Yeah. And, and the Pistons, that, those Pistons with, were good Pistons. With fucking like. That was when the Blazers and, were actually doing yeah, pretty well. Isaiah Thomas and. Uh, exactly. And those guys, dude, like, I can't remember anyone I else. think they won the championship in like 93, or at least they came, got into the finals. It, it, yeah, it's somewhere around there, like 91, 93. 91, or something. 92, 93, something. Like that. Probably 91, 92. I think you're right. 92, the Blazers. And the Blazers played right the there. Pistons, and they got real close. Not in the finals. They won their conference, though. In the finals, the Blazers played the Bulls, I think. It's been a long time. I just remember the Pistons and the Blazers Wasn't playing. The Blazers and Bulls? Might have been. Did they go to the final? I think the four final teams, the Blazers and the Pistons, were two of them. I think so too. And and I don't I don't know. And that's all I remember. I just remember Bill and Beer being the guy. It was like was kind of an aggressive player with a cool mask. Yeah, man. And he wasn't like the the greatest player, but like, you know, he you got to pull for the underdog. Yeah, he, he was with just a cool mask. He was the fucking like good defensive guy, man. That just like right. Could fucking... Well, elbow beat, a son of a bitch. You don't give a beat, fuck. Beat the shit out of someone. Right. Fuck shit up, dude. You, he, like, you don't care about getting personal foul. You don't give a fuck. Yeah. He's Bill and Beard. Yeah. He has a mask. Yeah, who gives a fuck, man? He's gonna he's gonna fucking tear shit he's up, He's got a man. translucent mask on his face. Who's yeah. gonna fuck with him? Right, dude. And if, if they do... He was good at fucking selling shit, dude. Like... You'd see him get hit, dude. He'd be like, Oh, that motherfucker hit me. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's right through my mouth. That's there's there's an art to that. selling in, in, like, real shoot sports. I really dude, believe so. Yeah. Fucking soccer. Soccer, football, too, soccer, man. Football. F- football. Fuck yeah. Yeah, dude. You watch that shit, dude, and that's, like, fucking personal foul. What the fuck, dude? Really? Like, okay, I see it. You got it, dude. Good job, man, on that, dude. You watch a lot of soccer? Dude, yeah, man. I fucking... You got a little Superman thing going on right there, bro. Is that on purpose? What's the Superman thing? That little that little curl 
on your forehead. Oh, dude, I spent like the Clark hour can't and a half curl. Today working on it, dude. Like, the Clark can't curl that one little curl right there for no reason. I'm like, I just try the right dude, side of your forehead. I, I, every morning I wake up and I, I like, like, I'm gonna I go for the Clark Kent today. Little curl, man, just so I can feel cool, man, for a little bit. Little Superman, dude. Little Superman. Yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Um, dude, but, I was cornering this guy in a fight that I trained with, and his opponent. Wore a, a Superman T-shirt. Oh shit! To come out to the ring with like you know the, the the S on his chest. Right. And then he had a hoodie on over it, zipped up, also with the steel Superman on it. Holy shit! I, I'm guessing he's a big Superman fan. Probably. He lost the fight. Superman's it didn't do him a lick of good, yeah. but I think it. You know, that was his gimmick, and that he's the Superman you, fan. You can't hate on him for that. But I'm getting sidetracked. But anyway, back to my week though. It was it's been a pretty fucking crazy week, you know. I feel I feel pretty like leveled out. I'm starting to return to some sort of semblance of normalcy. Fucking didn't train for like a couple weeks because I was like, man, dude, my bowels were like turning on me, dude. I fucking I was um this is I'm, I'm no shame in my game. Yeah. Fucking whatever. Like I'm comforted. I'm gonna tell you this because I'm comforted by by two facts. One, that at the worst, a guy at a bar in the mean streets of West Lynn and seven other motherfuckers I'll probably never meet in my life are going to hear this this disclosure. And two, there's a pretty high percentage of a chance that you're going to fuck this up, lose the file, and this is never <laughs> going to see the light of day anyway. But I soiled my draws, dog. Shit. I soiled some train spotting what? shit. I was sitting on the couch. Well, not on the couch. I was sitting on that orange chair. One of those orange chairs. Yeah, okay. <laughs> upstairs? <laughs> Make sure you don't sit on the orange chair. Uh, yeah, upstairs, man. And I, I, was, I was, you know, like I said, I've been playing Ultimate Madden for like 12 hours a day to try to take my mind off of feeling crazy shitty. Right. And I was fucking with auctions, and I, I had not moved from the spot for like four motherfucking hours. And I got up to like, you know, go, go do something. And I realized at that moment that I didn't sell my draws, dog. Yeah, you, wait, and I didn't even realize wait, it until realize, I got up. Oh, so this was before. This wasn't you. Realized, this was like this was eight like, days ago. But this was like you, when you got up, you Seven had realized ago. it wasn't like you got up and you. No, it was like who stuff. knows how long. It the, was the the soil in my draws had been there. Right. I okay. I've been sitting in that spot for like five hours, but my my fucking like. Every pore of your body just secretes fluids. Right. Of all okay. sorts. Once it's like having a mucusy butthole and stops. like some poop slips out. Not I'm not saying there was like no pile of motherfucking turds or nothing, but it was like I didn't even realize this shit happened and I get up and I'm like I'm like, oops. Because apparently <laughs> what what I heard was when you um you're like You feel like you have to shit constantly. Right, but whether you do or don't, it's like constant diarrhea. But like, but before when you're like, uh, when you're if you're like, oh, when you're doing it, drugs, when you're, you're doing drugs, like you don't when you're at, when you you're okay, that one user. big poop. Well, most people while, when when you're doing like like heroin and shit, yeah, um, or really any opiate, unless you get a good amount of fiber in your diet, yeah, your turds will be like rock hard, rock hard, like as rock hard as you can imagine. Turd, most compacted, like it's like passing stones through your butt. Jesus Christ. And it, it's, it, I mean, it can be miserable to shit, too, because it's like, uh, like you got to squeeze some shits out, and it feels like you're squeezing rocks out of your butt. Like, it, it, anyway, but yeah. uh, me, I take, I'm a vegetarian. I take fiber supplements and shit to make sure, I eat kale, things like that to make damn sure that didn't happen to me. Yeah. But I have been in that spot before, so I know what it's all about. Okay, sure. I, I didn't mean to fucking sidetrack you. No, no, we're talking about poop. That, that's fine. Okay. You're, you're on topic. Good. Um, nice. You know, stay on topic, bro. Stay on target. Yeah. Red five. Red five. Star Wars reference, totally over here. Oh, I thought you were talking. I was thinking yellow five. Stay on target. Um, anyway, um, so yeah, I saw my drugs, dude. I was like, like, I don't know why I just it, told you that. Was it? Well, I mean, it's good. I, it, I'm just telling you my week, bro. It, yeah, it can be helpful for it's other people. It's been fucking though. crazy couple of weeks. Um, I'm, I'm definitely not sewing my drugs right now, but like, dude, for like, like stomach and knots, like if it wasn't for Valium. Fucking, I had the doctor, this doctor wrote me up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I can get like five hours of sleep with a value in me, and for the next week or two, it's going to be tough to sleep like a motherfucker, but been doing a lot of yoga, taking lots of hot baths, 
fucking just just shit like that, playing Madden, trying to take my mind off shit, doing the minimal that is required of me, so that I can just pass time and play I'm Madden. S- I'm surprised you did it without the subs, dude. Like, dude, I watched this thing on on Vice. Uh, uh, you were telling me about yeah, yeah, Vice is great, man. Yeah, I watched this one. It was first about uh, like Indonesian people smoking cigarettes, and then it had a thing about people coming off of heroin, and they went to this place. There's this guy in New York who was like, he used, I think it was a, like an African thing oh. where you would go and like do these, uh, y- you have this like hallucinogenic thing. Yeah, 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 there's some shit that you can take that they're actually now prescribing in Canada that you're probably talking about. I can't think of the name of it, but you trip. Yeah, you trip. And then after you trip, you're, if you won't go into withdrawals, and it's just like boom, yeah. all in one, but you have to be willing to trip. Yeah, and uh, that's what. I forget what the fuck it's called, uh, Ibogaine. I mean, I was going to say ayahuasca, it's, something like ayahuasca. There's only certain spots that, that, that have it, but now Canada's starting to uh, use it. And I, believe me, that's been a thought in my mind for years. But I, I like, I don't take acid. I haven't taken acid in like 15 years. Gotcha. Because I did way too much acid as a teenager and had a really horrendous bad trip. And then I kind of took acid some more and liked it. But either way, I just kind of, I don't fuck with acid. Yeah. I'll take mushrooms these days, but I don't fuck with acid because it's too much of a commitment. And like that. I know you've never had a bad trip and we've had this conversation before. I've had bad mushroom trips. But when you've had one, it'll 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 fucking put the fear of God in you. Yeah. You're like, I don't know if I want to risk that again. Like, if you go into a trip with anxiety, oh shit, it can be a bad thing. Yeah. If you're slightly anxious, that it might happen. It's just, so you know. And, and on a side note, my uh, I don't want to even get into this. Basically, a bachelor party that I'm a part I'm a part, part of the wedding party. Like in a month or so, this dude's gonna get a cab and, and yada yada yada, and he kind of wants to take some acid. And I haven't taken acid in 15 years, so I'm contemplating taking acid for the first time in 15 years. I'm still back and forth in my head. Right now, I'm not. I'm trying to not think about that and take life one day at a time until I return to some sort of stable, yeah. sort of uh, spot in yeah, life. Yeah. But um, that's fucking awesome, dude. Like you, yeah, dude. No subs, dude. That's fucking amazing. No dude. subs, no fucking. subs. I mean, I have the bottle of sub sub subby text on my fucking on my shit. I've still got a bag full of methadone in my drawer because. You know, like whatever, but it's kind of like when I stopped binging on sugar when I first, because like when I first stopped doing heroin and I fucking, because uh, I like, kicking heroin is fucking horrendous. It's very hard because it's a short acting opiate, whereas the half-life of methadone is, is longer, which is why they give it to addicts because it, it keeps you, your cra- it satiates your cravings for a long period of time so you don't go looking for drugs because your opiate receptors in your brain aren't blocked. Yeah. Uh, which is why people, because they, they're used to being filled, and if you do it on a daily, I don't want to get into all the bullshit about it, but basically, because it goes, the half-life is shorter, the withdrawals happen quicker and, and more extreme, in my experience. Yeah. Like, the last time I tried kicking heroin, in like, 06 or 07, I got to, it to like, day three or four, and then I got I called and went into a methadone clinic for the first time. And I was like, it was during like a heat wave when it was like 104, 102 or three for like four days in a row in the summer, which is probably a horrible time to try to kick dope. But in hindsight, I don't even know where I'm going. I'm just rambling. But it was horrible. Fucking horrible. And, I, and, I, and I've and i been taking methadone ever since. You know, I've used heroin off and on whatever when I've lowered methadone does, but I won't get into that. But I haven't done heroin in like maybe like four years just because... Well, one, I don't want to be dependent on opiates. I don't really have a problem with the getting high thing, but I don't like to be physically dependent on something that my central nervous system needs because there's the fear of when I run out, I'm going to be sick as fuck. Right. And, like, mentally, I've been over it for so long since I've started to, like, you know, train, you know, and, and exercise and, do, you know, things that filled whatever it was that in my life that I filled with opiate drugs before. You know what I mean? Like, and I don't think I was mature enough when I, when I tried to kick the end to just cold turkey it anyway, I would have relapsed or gone back out and did it because my, my attitude towards towards getting higher was completely different, whereas now at my age, it's more of a hindrance unless I don't see it as such a glamorous, like, rock star ass, fun thing to do, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, it's just something, sometimes you gotta learn life, life lessons and, and it takes a while, you know what I'm saying? But I've been in the headspace to get the fuck over this for the longest time. I'm just afraid of... Uh, I was definitely afraid of the unknown because I've never kicked methadone before because I'd heard stories that methadone was harder to get off of than fucking heroin. Um, universally, I've always heard that. 
uh, because it takes longer because it builds up in your system because of the long half life, and it's and the withdrawals are more prolonged. Yada yada yada. Yeah. But since I've been tapering myself every three to six months for the last three years or four years or whatever to get down to such a small amount, seven and a half milligrams from like eighty, like what I've learned is is like I mean yeah it sucks, but I learned I learned how to suffer through it by tapering all those times and it really wasn't that much different except that once I got through that first really horrible week, then my bowels turned on me and I saw my draws and I feel like I constantly had the shit and yada yada yada. But whatever dude, I mean I'm sticking it out. I'm mentally strong. Yeah man. It's not even like and it's weird because like you say this to people, not that I go around telling people things because like again like I'm either too open or I should just shut the fuck up. But like. You almost don't want to say, yeah, I, I stopped taking my methadone fucking two weeks ago because most people that have no idea or have never used this kind of drugs have these like preconceived ideas and then they think that you're like, it's like almost like they instantly don't believe that you're going to succeed or they're, you know what I mean? Right. Or they're wary of that. You know what I mean? That's why I'm with the, the weed and cigarettes right. too at the same time. It's like, it's no, not on the same level at all as what, what you are. Right, but, right, right, know. because you're not going to shit yourself, right, and you're not going to fucking not be able to sleep for like three weeks, right, I don't know, I quit smoking, but, uh, and all that, but, but still, it's, it's like, in a way though, it's like telling somebody puts it out there, I, I'm so confident and sure that I'm done with this shit, yeah, that, because if I wasn't, I wouldn't say shit, yeah, because I'd be afraid that I'd, I'd look like a fucking, a fraud, or whatever, you know what I mean, or, or, but, like, I, I don't, like, it keeps me honest, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it keeps me, like, you're, you're accountable like, or whatever. Like, I tell my, my bottom, my striking coach, you know what I mean? Like, he knows what's going on with me besides the fact that I've been not at the gym for a few weeks or whatever. But, you yeah. know. Can, can you hold for a minute or can we, can you talk for a second? So Why, you want to pause or something? Yeah, I, I got, I got you to take shit? a piss. <laughs> I got to take a piss. You got, you got a minute to Yeah, dude, yeah, dude, pause. Dude, pause this conversation. Let, let, let me see if I can pause it. I don't know if I can or not. Take a, a small time. I didn't even know whether to bring weed or not because I was like, I won't bring it. He's probably not. I, I don't know how to fuck it, if I can pause it or not. I don't know if it's going to fucking do it. So I'm just going to let it go. You I can't can... just stop it and start a part two. Should we do a, start a part two? Fuck it. You want to? You wanna... Maybe there's a part two. Maybe there's not. But for now, so you, you got to handle your business. Okay. So let, let's. I mean, how long does it take to piss? 30 seconds. Go I'm fucking wash take, my go, hands. go take a leak. Let okay, it roll. Talk. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves. I'm not gonna say shit. Rusty is holding his dick at the moment. And I'm supposed to talk. Make sure to shake that shit off, bro. You don't want to be dripping on the floor. So anyhow, yeah, yeah. So I went back to the gym yesterday. Because physical activity helps me sleep, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's good to get tired. I mean, doing yoga helps and shit. Obviously, Valium helps. But even on even taking Valium, like, I, I'll get five hours and I'll wake up, like, instantly. Like, I can't get any more. I mean, it's just... Uh, the first week is impossible to sleep without fucking uh, seriously, like, sedating myself. But, um... Anyhow, so I'm, I'm like... I, I want to get back to training because I, like... It's what I love to do, and, you know, I, like, got the gym homies and, you know, all that kind of shit, build a team, yada, yada, yada. And so yesterday, I was, like, going to go to the gym, but I wasn't really sure, because I was afraid that I would shit myself. Take a bad bump or something, fucking. I was just... Well, I wasn't going to spar, and I was out of the fucking window, and my coach knows what's going on with me, so he knows I don't want to spar, but, I mean, in terms of just, like, typical... Just, just working on technique, hitting mitts, fucking doing conditioning and fucking calisthenics and shit. Well, I was afraid I was gonna be doing some some wall sits or some fucking medicine ball exercises and like 
So no, not shit. do wall shits. Well, I was afraid I was gonna shit my pants straight up, and like, especially after I had coffee in the morning, and uh, and so I had my my reservations, but I went down there, and there was a yoga class at the same time, in in a different room in my gym, so I was like, if I if I change my mind, I'll go to the yoga class. Either way, I'm cool. But I went to the boxing class, and um, so. Uh, I'm like an hour and 45 minutes into this striking class and you know I go hard as fuck dude it's like hard as fuck yeah and um and I'm just doing what I normally do not thinking twice about it and uh I fucking get this like I get this cramp like there's like uh my my, my coach is like get you guys go get in the ring and there's like stairs like a wrestling ring you know yeah and I, I like and when I get like I might make Jagger, dude. When I, once you start me up, like, I don't stop. You know what I mean? Like, I'm a machine. Like, I just drive forward, you know? And so I, I run, and as like, soon as you see I'm like, okay, coach, you know? Like, I run, and I jump from the floor to the third step of the fucking four steps to get into the ring, um, which are higher than the DOA steps, just to give you some perspective. And as soon as my fucking left foot hits that shit, yeah. and my foot is bent 90 degrees at my knee, I get this cramp in my calf that oh. is like... I mean, I've had cramps before all over that, like, whatever, you shake it out, you, you grit through it, you walk it out, whatever. I have yeah. never had a cramp this bad ever in my motherfucking life, man. And fucking, I couldn't move. I felt like if I extended my leg 100%, I was a, I had this fear that I was going to, like, pull like a muscle. Tear shit. Tear some shit. Yeah. I was afraid I was going to tear some shit. And um, I, I didn't want to move from that spot. I was like... I was like stuck like that, and like uh, the yoga teacher who uh, who's like you know knows anatomy, massage therapy, all that kind of shit. Like she was there, luckily, and she like, I mean, I felt like a fucking bitch, dude. I was like, I mean, I wasn't like selling too bad, but I was, I was, I, had, I was afraid of extending my legs. I thought I was gonna like tear a fucking muscle or an ACL or some crazy yeah. shit, cause I had never had no cramp like this, dude. And fucking, I can't see my shit, but people that are behind me. They were, like, holding my legs so that, like, they were just assisting me because, you know, it's just homie shit. And they're, like, telling me that it's, like, twitching, like, uh, what do you call it, uh, spasming, like, constantly. And that there's just, yeah. like, golf ball size shit, like, on the side of my shit. And it sounds horrible, but it's I can't see it. Out more. I'm like, this. yeah, it's freaking me out more. And I'm like, what the fuck do I do? And, like, I can't extend my leg. Like, I'm going to tear some shit. And, and, uh, and I was like, I told my coach, I was like, you know, go get his, like, the yoga instructor. And she went over there and she, like, massaged it and slapped the shit out of it for, like, five minutes or whatever. And, like, helped me out. And slowly I was, like, able to extend my leg. and then But, I mean, I, it didn't go away. Like, I still feel it, dude. And this is after, like, taking it easy, hot baths, massages, potassium, calcium. Basically, because my body is detoxing. Even though I drink a fuck ton of water anyway, yeah, I was dehydrated from all that ex- from you know two hours of, of of work in the gym. When normally like I got a gas, I was just, I was thinking I was in normal mode, not fucking like I should be careful mode. Right. Yeah. And I started to feel dehydrated like five minutes before that when I was doing these fucking <laughs> drills, but I was like fuck it, I'll do one more round and then I'll get some fucking water. And fuck, dude, I mean, I ain't never had no cramp like that. I didn't even know cramps could be like that. It was just fucking... Have you ever had a cramp that bad? Uh, I mean, a I, fucking... I've had one... One that sticks not, with you after you're able to, like, not like no 10 minutes in it passes, but like you still feel it the rest of the day and the next uh, morning after? No. I, I've had it like where it's been like where I've been asleep and woke up. Right. I've had those too, where you're like in fetal sideways or some shit, and yeah. it's like, yeah. And you're like, ah, oh, motherfucker, ah! Right. You start rubbing your fucking leg. It's oh, fucking oh, horrible. God. It's, and they're like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I'm like, I don't know. My right. leg is fucking hurts. I've been eating enough bananas. It's, it's basically like, it was like that times 20. Like, it was Shit. crazy, dude. And I'm, I, didn't, I didn't go to the gym today because today I would have kickboxed and there's no no fucking way I'm going to be doing the damn tie kicks with my leg today. I'm just taking it easy. Yeah, that's the fucking thing. Podcasting with you. Yeah, man, that's a good day to put podcast. Dude. Yeah, it's a good day to put podcast. So, you yeah. know. And that's been my week, dude. That, that's yes. it, man. But so, so you just so, so I was wondering. And I don't, I don't. I'm not trying to be from 
any any sort of judgment on you for not smoking weed. Do what the yeah. fuck you gotta do. Yeah. Like you're my homie, whether you're smoking weed or not, I don't give a damn. Yeah. But I'm just trying to rationalize with the 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 question is why you felt the need to do this. I guess. That's all I'm curious about. Uh, I might have asked you this last time we were podcasting, but I don't think I quite got a real answer. If I was to guess, I would say because you feel like maybe you're getting lazy or something, or maybe it's the money thing. Uh, well, no, it's sort of like what you know. I smoke like fucking. Is that too personal a question no, it's for not a too podcast? No, I mean, it's the podcast, dude. Like I just told you, I shit my drawers a week yeah. ago. No, man, I fucking I, I smoke all the time, man. It's like it's you know one of those things like I I don't know. It's like I don't have fucking you know that not. De- it's, you know, cigarettes and pot kind of dependent on them, dude. Like, you know, I fucking want to smoke. And, uh, you know, it's good. And, like, and, and plus with, with that, you know, realization of the the day, man. Uh, yeah. I still don't know if I can, how much I can go into that whole fucking. Yeah, no, it's cool. Let it process. If you ever feel like talking about it, I'm here. Okay, well, <laughs> you know, uh... On the Dr. Phil podcast. Yeah, uh, it's just... Sitting on the comfy leather fucking sofa. Dude, these so... These, I know, these are GS sofas, yeah, man. Yeah, these, these have come from a while. These were my roommate's parents, and they moved, and he ended up getting them. And so, like, he's had these for... At least since we lived together, score. like... The hell of a score. Yeah. Back in the day, back in West Lynn, man. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't let go of these for nothing. Yeah, these things have fucking been around, dude. I, uh, I, I've rocked them, but I, you know, I just, it's good for me not, not smoking weed, like, um, I don't know, because I've, I've done dumb shit too, smoking weed, man. I've gotten really? in trouble a fucking good amount of times. Oh, you mean weed. like with the law? Yeah, with the law or fucking... For possession just, or for like, yeah. like doing dumb shit under the influence of weed? No, dude, I never did dumb shit under. That's my point, of though. Weed. Like, dude, I'm not here to try to convince you that weed is harmless. No, I I'm just saying, like, I fucking, the, I get in trouble with weed because I'm I'm fucking. But that's stupid. not the weed's fault. That's the law's fault for being stupid. Okay, it's the law's you know fault. What I mean? Yeah, because I was before I, I started smoking weed, weed, I was doing really, really, really fucking stupid shit. Like when I was. So we. When you were a kid, it kept you from, once you discovered it, it kept you from doing dumb shit. Yeah, because I knew if I would have kept doing that shit, I would be in fucking horrible, horrible jail. So are you afraid Prison, that probably you're about to relapse and start doing lots of dumb shit? Because you're not smoking weed again? Yeah, I mean, it's been like... Have you done anything 13 crazy years. Crazy in the last... Since the Super Bowl? Since Super Bowl, I'm not doing... I've been fucking sitting here, like, laying low most all the time, just sort of... You know, watching wrestling and stuff on TV, or uh, I haven't been anything that takes your mind off. Of anything that takes my mind off too, because yeah, and I was sick, and so it's like, and I, I'm working at night, and like being at night, like I'm alone by myself normally. Like I'm yeah, smoking. Yeah, such a weird job. A pack of cigarettes, you know, a day. Yeah, dude, like. Oh, bro. Like last night. Care for a minty tea tree toothpick? Yeah. I'll fucking rock a toothpick, man. Dude, if I was a, if I was a smoker and I quit smoking, yeah, cigarettes that is. Yeah. I would totally fucking want to keep these in my pocket everywhere I went. Yeah. I, I like I like doing toothpick. It's kind of nice, dude. Like, um. I'm gonna get it right here. Yeah. I I like. I don't. Know, I was doing sunflower seeds most times when I. You are the sunflower seed guy. When I start smoking cigarettes and shit, it worked. And then I like chewing gum. I do a little bit, but. It's I'm, a lot healthier than dipping tobacco. Oh, I've, I've never liked tobacco, dipping tobacco. I tried it like, I probably don't I tried know, it once. Yeah, maybe 10 times in my years. life. And it's like, pfft, this isn't cool. I remember it's like, I was a cigarette any day, dude. Like, I've been seeing fools with no job so, down south, so I'm like, eh. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm young, I, young dudes, too, like rodeo cats, not even 30. Holy shit. Yeah, that shit goes down. Yeah. I mean, I, I got lucky not fucking ain't getting. Gonna, ain't gonna pull no women with no job. With no bottom lip. You know, no, right? dude, you ain't pulling nothing with that, dude. And that's that's real, dude. Operations you know? from cancer and shit. Yeah. And like... Anyway, some flash seeds. That, that, yeah, those are other... I mean, I gotta be fucking... I gotta be in better fucking health for... Uh, no, I for, fully am with you on yeah. quit smoking. Cigarettes. Yeah. And well, I'm not gonna say whatever, because like I said, I don't give a fuck. Because what you do is what you do. I don't want nobody telling me how to live my life. 
No, dude, I, I give a fuck if anyone. From my smoking. perspective, weed is, is, is a positive thing. As long as you're not, like, waking up and smoking weed every second from the time you wake up. Which is... Because then there's the potential to be a lazy fuck and not realize your potential. Right. And that, this happened to me. I've been in that spot, too, but I, I can balance. I got to balance it yeah. now. I mean, I do a lot of shit. I don't even smoke weed till, like, past 3 o'clock and I get up early. You know what I'm saying? Right. I, I like smoking sometimes in the morning, dude, you know? Sometimes, some days just, like, I feel like... Fucking, Am I keeping you from drinking your coffee? Getting, that's gone. Oh, Get okay. them awake and bacon and shit, dude. Like, it's just somebody who's good wake and bake, but... Sometimes. Every you know, now and again. Yeah, but... You know, I, I always... You know, I fucking oh, used to carry around a trail mix bag. Yeah, yeah, it's also a, a, a staple of every backpack at wrestling shows. Yeah. Sunflower pull, season trail mix. Yeah, pulling out the trail mix, and like, I, I always said, like, you know, that I fucking... Uh, well... The typewriter story, I, I fucking, I was always like, I fucking cho- always chose her over the trail mix, uh, but then I was still trail mix. I'm like, I, you know, I, 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 d- I dig her more than the fucking trail mix. <laughs> and I, I fucking, you know. So, I, 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 I'm, I'm trying to see the, I'm trying, I'm trying to decode what you're telling me. Wait, am I, you're am you're I saying decoding? your feelings for this girl are, are, are so strong that you were willing to give up trail mix. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's not that she has anything against trail mix. It's just like. Was she like, damn, homie? It's either it's either me or the trail mix. Choose. No, no. It's Ultimatum. Just, yeah, it's just probably a better thing, man. Like you know, and that's the only thing I found. Out. I'm allergic to peanut. As oh as really? Have you have not you eaten peanuts before though? Yeah, but. Uh, yeah. So how was that? Did it just kick in, or have you always kind of had mild allergies? Is, that, always kind of is that why it looks like you have a feline AIDS, maybe? Yeah, dude. Your eyes look a little clear. I ain't gonna lie, man. Yeah, man. Like I figured this out last week because I fucking um I, I had rice, um, but then and you're not talking about cocaine. No, no, I'm not. Real rice. Real rice. And like when I cook rice, I put peanut butter in it because I like fucking. Peanut butter taste on my rice. I've never heard of this shit, but okay. Oh, dude, it's awesome. Dude, okay. If you don't have peanut butter, peanut allergy, it's fucking, you take... Uh, as you say this, I can see three motherfucking big-ass creamy jars of peanut butter on those, the shelf. I don't fuck with creamy. Those are, those are my Yours roommates, Yours is the blue dude. one underneath it? Yeah, and that's you what like I had. You like that nutty left. shit. I, yeah, I had a big bottle I gave to my buddy. You like to mix I'm that like, well around. Yeah, dude. And I was like, so I go and I... Do a thing of rice, but then I put in like a huge fucking scoop, like fucking like it'd be like three, four scoops of uh, of peanut butter, and then like uh, some soy sauce and some sriracha, and like mix that all up with some garlic shit, and then I fucking put cheese on the top of that. That's weird, man. Yeah, dude, it's fucking really, really good though. Uh, peanut butter and cheese is awesome. That's like, a, that's like a Twinkie Wiener sandwich, dude. That's just weird. Yeah, well, Twinkie... That's UHF. Fuck uh, yeah, brother. Yeah. High five! Fuck you, right, dude. Um, I'm glad you got that. Dude, that's that's my shit. You missed the Star Wars Red Fives, but you got the fucking Twinkie Wiener sandwich. Yeah. So, so cool. I, I know what's up. And, uh... But it said... So, I ate this. And, like... 20 minutes later, I was fucking shitting like crazy. I had, I had <laughs> diarrhea like fucking no other, man. Like, had you only made it once? No, I made it before. And like every, every time, I fucking... You, you, you I, I, I yeah. got the shits. And then but like, you didn't put two and two together. I didn't put two and two together. And then like, I fucking know, like my face gets like... Well, the street rots you too. I mean, come on, dog. True. But then uh, I looked it up. I looked up peanut allergies... Because I'm eating rice. I'm no, nice. I can see your eyes are clearer. Yeah. Might be the but weed. Might be the weed and <laughs> cigarettes. <laughs> Could have to do with the peanuts. But, yeah, and it said, like, because um, I eat trail mix and shit all the time, and fucking, I'm always eating nuts and shit, and, like, um... The boy said he's always eating nuts and shit. Yeah. That's how I do. And I... <laughs> um... Yeah, it said like you get like face rashes and shit and like I, I believe it. You're, you know? you're looking less rosy around the yeah, eyes in certain yeah, spots. Yeah, I got fucking face you rashes. Probably gonna have a, a mild peanut allergy. I think it was. Nothing that's gonna like, put you in a grave like some fools are like, I yeah. got peanut. Oh my god, emergency room. Yeah, but there's varying levels it, of food allergy. Yeah, it was like fucking because I could feel it on my face and like and like my really? throat a little bit too. Like, 
Huh. You know, and so like I, I just one day like I googled it and I'm like, this you've been is killing like, yourself for years. I have, dude, and I love fucking peanuts, dude. Like, and like and I, what about I, cashews, man? I don't know if it's all nuts. I haven't tried like any other nuts. I don't want to <laughs> fucking risk it now. I'm like, dude, I fucking feel good that I'm not eating these. I don't want. I mean, you've eaten cashews before, though. I mean, I, I know you have. I have. I've eaten. I'm them giving before. you some. Yeah, but I don't know if they fucked me up or not. Well, I would try it, because at least then you'll know. What's yeah, maybe I'll give it a little try. I mean, you know you're not going to die, is my point. So yeah, I'm like, not going to die. You may as well experiment with some cashews. Yeah, and almonds and shit. I don't know, it's like a Find a nut, nut that thing. you can't eat. Yeah, because I know peanuts. Some people not. just have broad nut allergies, though. Yeah, and that's what, <laughs> that's what I'm trying to figure out, dude. I fucking... There's a joke in there somewhere. About bras or nuts. About bras and being allergic to nuts. Yeah. So somewhere there, there might be a joke. Somewhere. If only can think of one. Uh, I'm, yeah, not, I'm not quick enough. Yeah, man. Br- bring it on there, the podcast listeners. My mind ain't out. Yeah, go 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 to Twitter at what is your what is your podcast Twitter? At the podcast. If you could come up with a joke involving nuts and allergies and broads. And broads, yeah. Shoot it, shoot it, Rusty D's way. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, dude. He'll give you a plug, and you'll be the podcast famous overnight. Dude, speaking of plugs. That, uh, in that movie, uh, the Larry David one, the fucking... Hair? Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. Yeah, whatever, no, not the Speaking hair. Speaking of plugs. Speaking of plugs, hair plugs. Um, no, the, uh, the wall socket that's up high, dude, that was <laughs> awesome, dude. I'm like, that's fucking That's a great idea. Dude. That's a like, great fucking idea. Yeah, bending over for all that shit's, like, fucking stupid, man, like... It's a, I think it's because people like to hide the plugs behind couches and shit because they're, they're, they're in their mind they're like they'd be in the way of something they could frame, hang a picture over or whatever you know like it looks ugly on the wall like they want to put it like at the lowest level of sight so where they you know what I mean their they're, they're aesthetic of the room is, is yeah like like your empty white walls with no plugs on them but then again you got like thermostats and shit like why, why don't you have plugs too you know yeah I mean, I think it's genius. I know it's too, man. I don't know why I didn't think of that. A lot of people are not an fucking idea, as tall as the fucking, you know, two feet tall. A lot of people are two feet tall. A lot of people are six feet tall. That's oh. all I'm saying, bro. There's two feet people, bro. There are. There are. Some of them are in the NBA. The two feet people? Two feet people. Yeah, dude. Like uh, Muggsy Bugs, dude. Five foot three, bro. Like Muggsy. Who played for the Charlotte Hornets. Dude. And isn't there going to be a Charlotte Hornets again? Is that the team that is coming back? I never told anybody this before. But Dude. I carry Owen Hart with me everywhere I go. Nugget. I've, I've held this in for years, dude. You never knew, but... Wow. I'm, I'm telling you now, because you're sharing. We're sharing here. Yeah. So I just thought I'd let you know, you know, that... Dude, what where, where, pocket was he's been in, He's been in my pocket. My, my in your, le- your pants pocket. My left dicky pocket. For years, years, so, son, years. What, what happened when? How did Lady X find out about your nugget in your pants? Oh, that, Lady, X, I say told Lady I'm, X. I'm talking. I'm Lady X was now. like, Lady X was like grossed out. I'm like, I mean, she understands. Owen? Oh, you talking about Owen in my pants? Oh, Lady X doesn't know. I've never told anybody about Owen in my pants. She doesn't know. No, no, it's my little secret, dude. Wow. Well, obviously, it's not a secret anymore. I'm just, I'm coming out on the podcast. Yeah. This is like a... I keep, I keep a four foot, four inch tall Owen Hart toy in my left dicky pocket it, what, at all times. What, what brought just something you do? It comforts me, bro. How long? Um, maybe like 2003. So, 11 years. 11 years. <laughs> um, I don't even know what... That's a, you don't believe me, do you? No. I know, it's not that look you gave me, man. <laughs> would, would, you, would you be even more skeptical if I told you that when I'm at the beach in a Speedo, what, what? I, I always have what? a total package in my pants? <laughs> Was that the joke? You just wanted to fucking have a less Lex Luger joke. And you don't really carry your fucking Owen Hart in your pocket. I don't keep him in my pocket. I keep him right here, dog. 
Straight Pump, up. Pumps in a bump, son. Pumps in a bump. So you have fucking Lex Luger fucking rubbed up against your fucking dick. Well, it's to give the illusion when I'm at the beach that I've got a total package. That you're wearing... The ladies are like... Is that Lex Luger in your pants, or <laughs> yeah, you, actually, no, or you just got a really big dick? That's Owen Hart. <laughs> <laughs> that's Owen Hart. Zing. <laughs> what? What if you mix them up? You don't mix them up, though, do you? No, no, no. Lex goes in, in the in, in the genitalia. Do you, Do you actually really own a speedo? Do I own a speedo? <laughs> yeah. You, you calling bullshit on me, son? Dude, I've been calling bullshit on the Speedo more than you fucking You, think I, you don't think I wear a Speedo? You don't think I have the balls to wear a Speedo? I know you talk about your balls. You I got long balls, too, while we're on the subject. Long long balls? That was a Kirby enthusiasm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but, but total package, man. Total package. You, can, you can't have own heart. Own heart's on the total package. I, you know, it just seemed like a good idea. And, and you know, it works for me. You never... You never, you never Fall? Never. Never falls out. No. Speedos are tight, bro. It's like it's like it's like as long as he's facing my penis. Yeah. And his butt is out kinda. You know. It's not like your butt fucking a little. It just looks like I have a bigger bulge in the speedo. And it and it's and it it makes me laugh inside because I know that it's a total package in my pants. I don't give a fuck what the jokes. Awesome. The joke's only for my own edification. It has nothing to do with anything else, dude. It's just, you fucking... <laughs> it's like, and I get looks from women, and I smile inside. And like, yeah, I got a total package. Yeah, so, on that note, uh, let's... This has been the podcast number... 20... Come on, bro, come up with a number. Four. No, 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 I want to be the Michael Jordan podcast. I know you are. Just, I know how you are about order dog, but you already are. You're you're fucking twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, and now twenty four. All right. You got, you have you have a month. As long as I get the Michael Jordan. podcast. You have a month, bro. As long as I get the Michael Jordan podcast. I'm happy. So. Uh, All right. Signing off. This is. No, I don't have a month. I'm El Fuego Wero, brother. You have four weeks. You have four I, weeks. This is my straight. first ever podcast. Oh, you're right. Damn that guy. Damn that other motherfucker. You got one So week. you need to give me the Michael Jordan slot and whoever this other asshole is that you gave the Michael Jordan slot to, you need to just bump him up or down. I'm going to have to talk with that guy. That guy's kind of a fucking that prick. That guy's kind of a prick. He's hard to deal with. Yeah. So if he's down with it, I'll, I might be able to finagle something. Okay. We're gonna. There's going to be some number controversy here. So okay. uh, I'm going to give it a, a, a yo man. Okay, you can end on a yo man. Yeah. Yo, Yo man. man.